Thank you all so much. I want to do a, a few thank yous and just a few short comments. Uh, first of all, to the financial women of San Francisco, thank you so much. It's such an honor. It's been such a pleasure to get to know you all and, and work with you, and I'm, I'm truly honored. Um, to the scholarship recipients, um, who I got to meet a number of months ago, talk about awe-inspiring. I'm so glad you all got to see that video. These are such amazing people. And, and to all of you today who bought tickets and tables and sponsorships, it's, it's those dollars that support them and the next generation of women leadership in finance. So scholarship recipients, you rock. Um, and thank you all for supporting them. Um, I, I have a number of groups here, too. So I, I do a few shout outs. One is to my students, my former students, and uh, my co-teacher, Professor Tina Selig, who is here and who you saw on the video. Um, truly amazing to have you guys here and, and so proud of all of you. Uh, to my cohorts at DFJ, especially the finance team, thank you for coming today and supporting me and supporting this organization. And finally, um, thanks also to my coworkers from Zooks, Planet, Memphis Meets, Share This, Helix Re, and RMS slash DMGT. Those are all companies I get to work with because I serve on their boards, and it's truly an honor to work with such incredible people, and I'm thrilled so many of you are here to support me. But after this, go back to work, okay? <laughs> No, no kidding. Take the day off. Tell your, tell your boss I said so. Um, so, you know, I mean, I do really have the best job in the world because of all of you, so, so thank you. Um, it is a little surreal to get this award, though, because I was sort of, I'm going to call myself a little bit of a late bloomer when it came to an understanding of finance. Um, I was about Marlena's age when I went to Stanford Business School, and I remember one of the first case studies, you know, for those of you who went to business school, you know, you get that case and they have some stuff in there and you're supposed to figure out like what they should do. So we were all talking about the case. The professor let us kind of go on for 15 minutes about the pros and cons of the various product strategies. And he said, did anyone bother to run the numbers in the appendix? And of course, none of us had done that. And he said, so you don't know that this company is out of cash in 45 days. Uh, <laughs> so that was an eye-opener for me, this idea that you actually had to pay attention to that stuff, which as you've learned from my daughter has become a very near and dear thing to my heart since then. Um, as impactful as that was to me in business school, it became all the more right after business school. My brother Peter and I started this company, Tea Maker. You've seen the pictures. Uh, and, and you really learn a lot when it actually goes from being a case study to the idea that you can't pay people and you can't pay yourself and you might have to shut down if you don't bring money in. And, and I can tell you we had many near-death experiences from, uh, from, those, from those days. Luckily, they were near-death experiences, but still, they were, they were pretty dramatic. There was one in particular I was thinking about where I was at a Macworld Expo in the early 80s in Boston and we had heard a rumor, it was going around the trade show actually, that one of the big distributors was going to file for bankruptcy. And I thought, well, if I get that money a certain amount of time before they file, I can keep it. But if not, either I won't get it or I'll have to give it back. So I decided um, it was, uh, the company was based in New Hampshire, which is about a two and a half hour drive from Boston. So I went and rented the cheapest car I could. And then I was worried that I wasn't that intimidating looking because, well, you've seen the early pictures. <laughs> Um, and so I thought for some reason, you have to remember this is like 1984, 1985, that I would look more intimidating if I had a very large briefcase. <laughs> so I borrowed, I found someone at the show who had a very large briefcase and I borrowed this briefcase and I drove to New Hampshire and I walked in the lobby of this place and I sat down with my briefcase and I said, I am not leaving till you pay me the $65,000 you owe me. Because I knew if I didn't get that, pay, that check, I wasn't going to be able to make payroll the following week. And so I waited about an hour and a half, and God knows what they thought was in that briefcase. I don't know what it, like, I'm thinking, you know, do they think it's like a, a detonation device, or, or do they think I'm expecting cash, right? And I'm just going to get the blocks of money. And anyway, they paid me, and, and I came back, and, um, and we lived to fight another day. But those kind of experiences, it, it's what gives me great empathy for the entrepreneur, because it's one thing to be a venture capitalist and say, you know, oh, you need to lay off some people. It's another thing to be that person who has to go do that and tell people that you know, they don't have a job here anymore. And, and I've been through those ups and downs, and, and it, it makes me um, very empathetic towards the entrepreneur. But another group I'm very empathetic towards is the finance experts, the CFOs that I have worked with. 
Um, because I, I have to say, I think that the financial role is the most unsung role in um, the startup ecosystem. Because here's why, right? Silicon Valley, we all celebrate the inventor, you know, the, the person on the cover of the magazine who came up with the idea. Internally, you know, the CEO celebrates the person who brings in the most sales and like sends them to Hawaii or something like that. Then let's talk about the finance team. You have to be perfect and on time, and if you do that, basically no one talks about you. <laughs> um, now, if you don't do that, you're gonna have hell to pay, right? If you don't do it, you're in big trouble. That just seems wrong to me somehow. I mean, I, you know, and I will tell you that I have been through many situations where the CFOs and the finance team working in the background have saved our butts. Um, so for all those times and for all of you who have done that, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. You are very much appreciated. So watching the video was all kind of surreal for me. I, I kind of had two big takeaways. One is, those were a lot of awkward haircuts. Um, I don't know, at the time I thought they looked good. Now I look back and I'm like, whoa, those bangs. Um, but the second thing is how lucky I've been to have these amazing, wonderful people who have been both friends and coworkers, um, including Ann Winblad, who is a former recipient of this award and who sponsored our student table today. And, and I am sorry Ann couldn't be here. She had a very good excuse. She's on a romantic cruise in the Mediterranean with her husband, who I introduced her to. So just, <laughs> just saying. I am a very full service entrepreneur when I'm an entrepreneur. Um, anyway, I, I, you know, I have been so lucky, right? I have been so lucky to have um, these people in my life. But as you've heard from Marlena and you've heard from the students, I, I, I have a, or as my students might tell you, I have a philosophy about life. And so it isn't just luck. I drive this with an action plan. And uh, you know, I'll leave you with that thought to encourage you all to consider doing this as well.